Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Noble Conversation. I'm Mike. I've got two gentlemen here that I certainly uh, have the world of respect for. I've been uh, part of their organization now for charity work for a number of years. That would be this right here, Motorcycle Ride for Dad. So let's get started with the co-founders, the uh, originators of why I'm so busy these days. <laughs> <laughs> we got Byron and we got Gary. Welcome, like gentlemen. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so let's get started as to why I'm so busy, I guess. Uh, no. <laughs> so 24 years ago, the two of you got together and, uh, and had this crazy idea. So maybe what's the backstory? What, what happened 24 years ago to make, to make you uh, envision doing something for prostate cancer? Well, it was actually uh, earlier than that, you know, uh, 25 years ago, Byron and I first met, but it was a year or two actually prior to that when uh, I was uh, doing some interviews and I uh, came across a really great, happy-go-lucky guy and I was having a chat with him. He was, I knew he was uh, a cancer survivor, but I didn't know anything about prostate cancer. Um, we were having a coffee, and uh, I said, Charlie, what are you up to this afternoon? I was just before I headed uh, back up to Ottawa. And that's when he uh, hit me uh, between the eyes. He said, Gary, if someone had told me about the PSA test one year earlier, I wouldn't be going home this afternoon to arrange my own funeral. I was speechless, got in my truck, headed back home, and uh, didn't know what to do. Uh, I'd recently uh, gotten back into motorcycling, and uh, it was my wife who knew Byron. My wife worked for the Ottawa Regional Cancer Center. Byron. Uh, was uh, with the uh, police, the uh, president. Anyway, she said, I want you to meet this guy, Byron. And so we uh, ended up at a, at a Tim Hortons. Right, yeah, for sure. And from, from my side of it, um, back then I was a, a, a police yeah. officer and on the, the uh, Ottawa Police Association. Uh, we were looking for to uh, get our guys involved with another charity. We were supporting the, the Boys and Girls Club back then, and we thought we wanted to expand it a bit to take on another charity. Um, so we interviewed a number of them, and that's when I met Linda from the, from the Cancer Center that came and talked to us. Uh, we liked what they had going, and uh, so we decided as an association uh, to sponsor uh, the 2K Walk that they had for the Do It For Dad. Oh, yeah back then uh, for, for, uh, for cancer. So we, we took that on and then shortly after that I became president of the association and they told me that I was gonna have to actually walk in this event. <laughs> <laughs> I said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I don't walk much, but uh, you know, I said, uh, if you got anything with a motorcycle that's on, I'm in, you know, and uh, he said, well, wait, then this is what Linda says, if I got the guy you should meet, she says, I wanna hook you up with, uh, with Gary Jans. <laughs> so they, they set up the meeting for us. <laughs> so you guys didn't know each other up, up until that point? No, not no. at all. So who is your... still deny it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friends by acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, uh, who was your friend that uh, had prostate cancer? Charlie Pester. Charlie who, Pester. Who died shortly after that, and uh, I couldn't get that out of my mind. Yeah. And so uh, I thought, if, you know, maybe maybe we should uh, organize a ride, because yeah. I was you know, all excited about motorcycles again, yeah. and do something for Ride for Dad. And that's when, you know, my wife said, you gotta meet, gotta meet Byron. Uh, he's a motorcycle guy, yeah. and uh, he's president of the police association. Uh, maybe the two of you can do something. And so, uh, I'd never seen him before, we uh, stumbled into Tim Hortons <laughs> 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 and sat there for a while and had a coffee. 
And uh, we, uh, uh, Byron says, I don't know about this, but uh, I'll let him tell the story. Yeah. When we walked into the Tim's and, you know, busy schedule as a president, and I was going to meet this Gary Jans fellow, and uh, I walk in, the first thing he said to me, he said, uh, have you had your prostate checked? I said, okay, well, this is going to be a short meeting, you know, and I, I said, no, and he said, well, sit down, I got a story to tell you. So he sat down and he, he told me the whole story of Charlie Pester. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it hit, hit home right away. I said, wow, this is, this is really something. And he said, uh, so do you know anything about organizing a, a motorcycle ride? You know, and I said, well, honestly, I'm a, I'm, I'm a rider, but as far as organizing a bike ride, it says, no, not really, but, you know, how, how hard can it be? You know? yeah. So <laughs> we, went, we went on to right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can tell you how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Charlie's the inspiration behind, behind literally thousands and thousands of men having their lives saved now. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, uh, it's happening across the country. Uh, you know, yeah. our, our, our goal developed into you know we save men's lives yeah. uh, and uh, you know early detection uh, does it yeah. as uh, everybody knows by now and uh, we uh, thought we'd, we'd do one ride and uh, you know it, w it was raining and windy and cold but we had a group of riders out and uh, we raised uh, some money I think we raised about 20 grand, yeah, 20 eh? Grand. Oh, wow. And, uh, Brought it so home in a shoebox. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> in, in a shoebox. And uh, so when that was over, um, I immediately started getting phone calls from other cities saying, cancer centers in other cities, saying, why can't you do a ride for dad in our city? I talked to Byron about that. Oh, <laughs> hadn't thought about that. <laughs> so what, was it the Cancer Foundation itself that that was able to get the word out that that you guys did this ride and you raised 20 grand? Well, we, like we raised 20 the first year and, yeah. you know, and as Gary said, the original plan was just to do a, a one-shot deal and, you yeah. know, pat ourselves on the back and go home. Uh, but then, you know, we said, well, why the heck, why don't we try it again next year? And so we did, and so though we had about 80 some odd motorcycles the first uh, year, you know, when we did it the second year, we did a little bit of advertising. We got some of the local mm. sponsors to get on, on board to help us, and, and uh, you know, lo and behold, uh, you know, we were up to about 230, 240 bikes showed up in year two. Oh, wow. You know, and the amount of money we raised went way up as well, and then by year three, it, you know, we were up around 700 bikes. So all of a sudden, it was really taking off, and, and uh, we were making our donations. Uh, I don't know if you remember, um, there used to be the, the, tel the cancer telephone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'd, yeah. we'd get up on stage with our check, and we'd make yeah. a, a donation on behalf of the Ride for Dad for, you know, $60,000, $75,000, or whatever it was, you know, and, and that started to catch, catch wow. people's attention, you know, from, from these other cancer centers. You know. Jeez. But as we... As we expanded, um, we got into, uh, you know, now all of a sudden uh, you get into the business world and uh, we have to uh, arrange for this money. We had to work out separate deals with each of the cancer centers across uh, Ontario that we were involved in then. And then, of course, our lawyers said, you should not be doing that. Uh, why don't you set up a foundation uh, mm -hmm. and thereby you can control exactly where the money goes and mm -hmm. uh, and it, how it's it's being used and mm -hmm. so uh, now things get complicated you know and Byron and I are sitting in in, in the office of the lawyer and he says you got to do this you got to do that you know you got to protect yourself and yeah. and you have to have control over where the money goes. It doesn't yeah. just, you know, go into, you know, uh, a big pot at the, you know, yeah. at a telethon, you know. Yeah. And, and so that's where, you know, Prostate Cancer Fight Foundation uh, was created. 
based on that. Yeah, uh, Gary was very yeah. adamant right from the beginning, um, you know, that our money go to, and you know, it came from talking to the doctors, that it go to awareness that yeah. men weren't getting their prostate checked. Um, I don't know if you yeah. were pretty young back then, but yeah. 25 years ago, men didn't sure didn't talk about prostate no. the way they do now, and uh, men weren't getting checked, and was a, the doctor said a simple PSA test, we can catch it early and we can we can save lives. So, yeah, Gary Richmond, you know, I didn't know much about prostates, but you know, yeah. I didn't know what it was, let alone where to find no. it, you know. When I, <laughs> but and then so then Gary, you know, but he said no, he said we should put our money into awareness and then uh, you know, maybe take a look at some getting some research done, but let's get let's get other researchers started, let's do seed yeah. money. But then let's stick to that, you know. He said, oh, yeah. he, you know, and Lord knows over the years, and he's been, uh, you know, a real stickler for it. And we don't, this is what we do, stick to this. And, and so that was. What year was it that you guys expanded from Ottawa to a second location? 2005, I believe, or four. Yeah. 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 Uh, didn't we go down to Kingston? Yeah. Uh, we see that, and that, then that's a whole, you know, yeah. other world. How do you possibly, yeah. like, we had our friends here, and, and I had the Ottawa Police Association yeah. as a was a big source of our first volunteers to go out there. And yeah, it takes yeah. a lot, as you know. Oh yeah, it takes yeah. a lot of volunteers out there to put one of these events on. Yeah. And uh, so now, how do you go into a brand new city where you don't know anybody, and yeah. and start to put that logistics together because you need people on site. Yeah. Can't you can't be running a ride in Kingston from Ottawa well, sort of thing. So it's your network, right? Yeah. It's the network that you that yeah. you're. You you're relying on, so right? We thought about it. You walk into a city, you can, you can go into a biker bar and, you know, sidle up beside some guy and say, hey, have you yeah. had your prostate checked? You want to go for a ride? <laughs> yeah. You know? See what happens. <laughs> you can see where that would go. <laughs> yeah. Byron came up with a brilliant idea about that time. Uh, he said, why don't we talk to police associations in the various cities? Yeah. And... Uh, and so, see, okay, let's do that. We got an airplane. We started going across the country. We started at one end and went over the other. Byron lined up meetings with the police associations everywhere, mm -hmm. and uh, they were very receptive. And so that's how it all expanded because of that idea. Because it's gone beyond there. that now, but that's yeah. what started. Uh, our trek across the country, you know. Yeah, we yeah. And that very first year, we, we, we chose Kingston because I knew the the Kingston president, of the association there, yeah. and it was close. You know, it wasn't yeah. too far because obviously we didn't we didn't have any money. Did, <laughs> you know, we were doing, yeah. it, doing it out of our own pocket. Yeah. And so then we went to uh, London. Was another good friend of mine, and um, Kitchener Waterloo. So okay. we we grabbed yeah. those three cities and said we got those guys together and said look. What I was able to do is said, look. Here's the benefits it's done for the Ottawa Police Association. You know, our guys yeah. are involved. They're you know they really like it. It's you know it's good for them. If it was good for my association, it'd be good for yours. And they bought into that and they said yeah. And you know and they heard the story and you know it was just a matter of finding a few guys. Because at well at this point you were you were what four years four, in four as association, but also as association in. president too, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So very busy. You were working at the time too. I was, um, yeah, I had retired and gone into uh, uh, developing uh, 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 television, uh, uh, spot, uh, not, not uh, podcasts, yeah. but we were, yeah. we were <laughs> actually back in those days um, doing uh, all kinds of stories across the, c the uh, country. I was traveling around, in, uh, you know, over in Europe, uh, the oh, Arctic, wow. and... Uh, you know, in the south and, and producing documentaries. But all that ground to a halt when this thing just expanded yeah. and uh, I didn't have time to do that anymore. So that's where my my retirement money <laughs> 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 went out, uh, out the window. You know, nobody was, you know, we didn't get paid for anything. You know, and if we had a, yeah. drove down to Windsor, if we had a 
put the gas in ourselves, and if we stayed overnight somewhere, we picked up the hotel ourselves. And and that's pretty cheap hotel. <laughs> <in the video. laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you know? So at what point did Linda regret introducing you to Byron? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Was that within the first four years? <laughs> yeah. He was coming yeah. back from the first trip when I came home with him and sat there in his kitchen for <laughs> two or three hours. <laughs> is, it, does he, is he ever going to leave? Yeah. <laughs> they adopted you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your name's hyphenated now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, all all from from this you, now we're across the country. You guys have spent a uh, I mean an absorbent amount of time growing this into what it is today. And you know I just had the pleasure. Those that are watching right now, I'm the co-chair for the Ottawa p- chapter um, in uh, in Ottawa here and. And we just had the pleasure of going to Newfoundland for the annual summit, talking with the co-chairs across Canada. And it kind of hits home as to the what this idea has grown into. And you see all these people in this conference center, and it's full of this energy, and people are looking to create new ideas and grow and expand. And uh, what's that like for the two of you when you're sitting there and you're looking at that is it a little bit surreal still or is it kind of hit home that hey we are responsible for this well i i I never looked at it that way i I just i just you know look around and uh can't believe in in what these people you know they they they, right across the country and and they're all involved in this thing and i look at them and i'm i'm so proud of all of the things that they are doing, and uh, and it's you know uh, I don't feel that we are responsible for all of that because we just happen to find a whole bunch of good people, <laughs> 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 and then we uh, you know we started uh, looking for researchers, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we you know our goal is to provide seed funding uh, for prostate cancer because nobody. You know, provides seed funding, and and that's you know, it's instead of hu- you know giving away huge sums of money, we give away smaller amounts of money. And and, and by the way, yeah. we're very different than most charities. The money we raise stays to f- fund research in the areas where the money was raised. You know, yeah. it stays. The money stays. You know, where, where what was, was the raised. backstory with that? What what was the idea when you thought of we want to keep it local? At that point, had you had expanded to a point where you were in multiple cities and dealing with multiple hospitals, and you wanted was that a, a, a lack of a better term, but leverage for you to get more involvement within the community itself because they knew that the money was going back to their community. Absolutely, was, you know, yeah. I. We didn't put a lot, a lot of thought into it, uh, you know. <laughs> those, those, those words, <laughs> you know. We start a lot of our stuff with that, you know. We don't even put a lot of thought into that, but yeah. we'd sit there and have a couple of drinks and say, you know what? I think the money should stay where the money is raised. Yeah, Byron, says, that makes a lot of sense to me, and so that's the way it was, yeah. and that's that's the rule that we've followed. And yeah. people can't believe that because, you know, most charities, you know, they'll tell you, well, we'll, uh, we'll use the money where it's most needed. Yeah. And, and you never hear about anything uh, yeah. after that because you don't know where the money yeah. went, you know. And, there, yeah. and there's lots of good points to that. Yeah, know, yeah, enough, absolutely. But we chose to go the other <laughs> route, you know. <laughs> what, what do you think um, all these leaders, now you're getting into – some of the smaller communities, like uh, Ottawa's demographic is a large, Kingston's, you know, again, mid-sized demographic there. When you start getting into some of the smaller ones, maybe we can explain to everybody listening how, how that, where that money goes. It's to their, lo- to their, their nearest um, large facility itself that, yeah. that it is. So I, as long as people are understanding is that, you know, um, it's not a, a one-room hospital that, <laughs> you know, yeah, no. <laughs> Dr. Nick is in, in no. behind going to play around no. and get into no. cancer research. But look, look at the central Alberta, 
you yes. know, uh, there, there's no research facilities there. And so they choose whether they want to support research in Calgary or Edmonton, okay. you know, yeah. and uh, that's what, you know, so it benefits the area where the money was raised. But you know, when, when yeah. we first started out there, you'd be amazed the number of areas, large areas that we went into where there no research was being done. Right you know, there. That was in Calgary, we mentioned Calgary, for instance, you know, yeah. we, we talked, they had a beautiful um, prostate urology center there, you know, and we went in to talk to them and, you know, they, they showed us, you know, with one stop prostate building sort of thing, you know, the urologists yeah. and get everything done in one building. And then we sat down with the board, you know, and Gary finally asked the question, yeah. he said, well, how much research are you guys doing? You know, and everybody just kind of hummed and hawed and looked at their feet, you know, and this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, well, we got one of our doctors that runs a golf tournament. <laughs> so we <laughs> use that money, and, and he does a little research until the money runs out, and then he goes back to being a doctor. Yeah. You know, so they, we were stunned. Oh. Says, well, you know, that's just cra it's just crazy. Yeah. So Can't now, like, now the Calgary ride, you know, raises, uh, you know, a lot of money every year, plus some of the, the you know, rides closer to it, and, you know, there's some yeah. really decent research being done, you know, in the Calgary area, and that's... Uh, the it's other thing about the, the seed funding is <coughs> really amazing, and that is we, we've got tons of examples where we've supported some uh, uh, a researcher with seed funding, and they have come back with, with evidence that what they're after is working. And so then they are now able to apply for larger funds of money that are, you know, government money and other money. And, and you know, we may put forty or $50,000 into somebody's pocket and say, you know, w we like what you're doing with that. But yeah. then they make that grow. And that's why we call it the seed funding. And it, yeah. it, we've got examples where $50,000 turns into more than a million of, of dollars of research, not just in Canada, but in the U.S. as well. Absolutely. I, here, I, one of the one of the examples that that I can speak of is here at the Ottawa Hospital, where over the years I've been there for check presentations, and <coughs> we have those nice big checks and we present them, and then, you know, you wonder where it goes. And they they're great with setting us up with tours of the research side, and then explaining, okay, this is where your money went to, and then because of your money, this person, this person, and this person, all contributed to so now they have this and they've been able to roll that money now exponentially into much larger amounts of money to actually cover the expended because I, I was taken back I knew research was expensive but I had no idea that like all the little minute things that you don't think about that go into the research and it might not just be actual it could be the equipment itself we were we were there a couple months ago and they're showing us this machine that takes up half of a room and it's spinning cells and blood platelets and then they're breaking that down into you know a million different pieces and analyzing each one of them and it just floored me as to the cost of <laughs> this stuff you know we're, yeah. we're in a room with millions and millions of dollars of equipment and that's is what led them for instance the Ottawa hospital you know, seven years or so ago we did a tour and they were showing us on petri dishes cancer cells that they had treated and the cancer cells were now dead. That seven years ago was at whatever stage they clinically call it. And then a couple months ago we went back in and they showed us how they've actually done it now with, uh, with mice and actually been able to kill the cancer cells within the mice. So now it's one step closer to human yeah. trial and within that 24 hour period they're killing these cancer cells. Yeah. You know, it's, it's remarkable. But what, what's really also important with the, the money staying where it's raised, again, is, is this breakdown that we do between research and awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so awareness is, is a large, you know, in some communities, and the, and the decide what their split is going to be, yep. and the amount of research and, and, and the amount of money going into awareness. So you get it, especially into the, into the smaller communities, you know, then that money gets spent there it could be signage on a hockey board in North Bay at, the, at mm -hmm. the rink telling guys to get their prostate check or, you know, yeah. or a billboard or, you know, a local newspaper taking ads yeah. out, uh, time on local radio stations, you know. So we're, we're now reaching, 
men that are out there that, that live in smaller communities and live in the rural areas, yeah. getting that same message to them, um, you know, that, that is being sent out in the big centers. You know. Do you think that one of the one of the initial struggles of with the ride itself was also having men understand that it was a simple PSA test. It was a blood test because it's kind of amazing how many people today will still even joke or comment about, well, it's a finger up my hoop and uh, then we're going to get tested this way. And, but there's actual individuals that do think that it's, it's that test. They don't actually do blood analysis and they don't understand that it's, it's that simple. In five minutes, you can have your blood drawn, removed. In Winchester Hospital, we had 219 people this year, and 25 of them registered high levels uh, for PSA for further analysis. And um, Saving lives, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. It, we, has that been a, a challenge, just the education portion of what exactly a PSA test is? Have well, you well, it does, and, and it's changing. I mean, yeah. from where we were 25 years ago, when you think of where yeah. everything was 25 years ago, yeah. you know, we were just coming out of Y2K when oh, we yeah. thought the whole world was going <laughs> to clap, you know, over the computers. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a lot, of, lot, lot has changed, and a lot yeah. of research has, has really moved ahead, too. But the message for us at, in the beginning was talk to your doctor, mm -hmm. get the PSA test, and then we fully believe at the beginning that the the DRE was, was needed right off the bat, that the PSA yeah. wasn't enough. But now it's decided, well, get the PSA first, get that done, and then it's the next step, you know, and then if yeah. the doctor wants you to get in for DRE, yeah. get that done, and then if it, that leads to a biopsy, you know, fine, go, you know, take the next step. But you, you gotta get started on that road if you need it, or don't need sure. to go down the road at all. We've, I mean, I, I had a gentleman last year approach me at, uh, at the ride, he came over to me, and. Uh, he's like, I believe he was 40 years old, 41 years old. And uh, he came over and shook my hand and he said, I was with a group of, of, of friends that were older gentlemen and they came to the PSA clinic. So because I was there, I just decided to do the blood work itself. And uh, I think he was just about to turn 40 or 40 and got the blood work done. Anyway, sure enough, came back high did in for further testing, he's got prostate cancer. You know, yeah. he caught it so early, he's doing yeah. great. Uh, he was at the ride, you know, yeah. last year participating and, but he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have if it wasn't for, you know, his friends that had seen the ads in Ottawa yeah. and seen the promotions talking about the ride for dad and, and, and doing that. And I mean, it's, it's pretty remarkable when you have those conversations with people. And, you know, I'm sure the two of you have had many, many of those Awareness yeah. is so important, and that's why yeah. we split it up with research and, and awareness. And, and uh, the awareness is what saves men's lives because yeah. men, you know, don't think about things like that. It's, you know, you don't sit around talking about your prostate. Well, you, you, know, you, yeah. need to, you need some, somebody to, to <laughs> fire it up you know, and get you going. Yeah, it's not really a sexy conversation. No, it's, no. Uh, no. <laughs> but we, I remember we were, we did a cross Canada tour in, uh, for our 10th anniversary. We rode across the country and it was in Northern Ontario and we were stopped in some little gas station somewhere gassing up and this little old lady came over and stuck a $20 bill in my vest pocket, you know. She thought you were big, a dancer. Big, big she thought you were the local dancer. Here, <laughs> big ugly biker there. And she goes walking and puts a $20 bill in my pocket and grabs me, gives it a squeeze in my arm there and, and there's okay. tears in her eyes. Wow. You know, you could just tell that she'd, you know, she'd lost somebody. She'd been affected. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah, a lot of little moments like that. Well, I mean, last year uh, at the ride, if, if you guys recall, I, on the stage I asked who, who's, you know, has prostate cancer, who's had prostate cancer, who's been affected by prostate cancer. Yeah. Every single hand was up, and in a sea of people, as far as you can see, there every single hand was up. It's affected everyone. You know, when yeah. the stats came out and they're saying one in eight, yeah. um, you know, men will will have prostate cancer. Uh, that's a lot. That's, that's right. Certainly it, a lot. Yeah, and it affects yeah. everybody. W do you guys recall what the numbers were when you started it? Like it's one in eight right now. Has it? Have you seen that 
increase over the years or decrease? Do you recall that? It's been yeah. pretty level uh, as far as I know, and it varies slightly, too, from province to province. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's pretty consistent. You know, it, it, I've seen yeah. sevens and I've seen eights, uh, and I've seen areas where it's higher. But it, it's, uh, it's pretty con consistent, yeah. and it's not going anywhere. That's it's right. actually what we what, what we like to see is the number of concern of confirmed prostate cancer cases going up, and the number of deaths going down. Absolutely. Okay. So that yeah. means that means you're you're catching it, and you're you know you're at least in the yeah. fight, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's what we like to see. It it'd be interesting to see. You know, over the journey of of the ride, I mean, we're coming into our twenty fourth ride this year, and then it it certainly be nice to see those numbers all of a sudden. Because of the awareness, the deaths are going down, and and I think that you know, and just from from observation, I think that that's also there's this stigma of around prostate cancer being so curable, and so people, I've had individuals that have said, well, it's it's a very curable cancer, oh, at least at least they got prostate cancer, and and I mean I I lost my father to prostate cancer, so. That kind of hits home when someone says that to me because yeah. it's, to me, it's just kind of ignorance around the idea that uh, any cancer is acceptable. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's still remarkable that some people will still say that, yeah. Yeah. you know, and and try and get that word and the messaging out there. But where where do you, the two of you where or have you even talked about it? where do you see the the next five ten years with the ride? Yeah. You know, and what we we kind of dropped off there when we were talking yeah. about the expansion of the ride. Just mm -hmm. talking geographically, yeah. but it, it's more than that. You know, it expanded exponentially with the number of things mm -hmm. that we we do around the ride. You know, with uh, creating yeah. all the, you know, we've got some very talented people working with us, uh, creating the messaging, yes, and getting all getting all that stuff out, uh, the design of all the souvenirs, all that kind of stuff again to keep keep getting that message yeah. out and. And putting on a, a motorcycle back when we started, I think there was maybe the ride for sight mm -hmm. was about the only other ride going yes. on back then now there's you know 10 or 15 rides every weekend for a lot of different uh, different events right so yeah. there's all that competition um and everything from you know the, the whole cost of putting everything on now with permits and policing and insurance yeah. and yeah. as you get bigger and as you get you know you know yeah. then there then there's the, the whole accounting thing when you're dealing you know in millions of dollars you know mm -hmm. then you have to be obviously have to be accountable Absolutely. So then there, there's accountants and, and auditors and all that kind of stuff, dealing with mm -hmm. CRA, all that kind of stuff. So it, so it becomes a very, very intense business like thing, and uh, you know and that's yeah. why we need the sponsors to help us to to defray those kind of costs. Yeah, we've been, I mean, really blessed in in Ottawa with some absolutely amazing sponsors. Like yeah. year after year, the these yeah. the same individuals step up, and we. And have new individuals that are coming to the table and, and interested in uh, in participating, and they love what what the ride does and what it stands for. And uh, and every year, it's 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 so humbling to you know you can pick up a phone at any time and and say, hey, we we need this, and absolutely, how can we help? Like they they go out of the way. It's it's unbelievable the community that we have locally, and then t again talking at the summit with you know, nationally across the same, it's that same feeling, you know, the same message that everybody has is that their local community is just hands-on participating. The volunteers that come out, I mean, it's unbelievable how many, how many people come out for, uh, for the ride and, and year round, like our executive year round. I mean, we're, we meet twice a month right now, um, as a team, but then everybody's doing stuff throughout and, and we're four months out, and next month it'll be increasing again and, and more and more. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know it's what Ride for Dad stands for yeah. or, or, that, or, or that logo. Uh, it's so distinctive. and uh, you know. Who came uh, up with that name? Uh. <laughs> I think it was a spinoff of the Do It for Dad yeah. that, that okay. started that thing. Probably. So then we made it the Ride for Dad because we were wanted to get away from the Oh, did we ever get away yeah. from the, the walking and the running? <laughs> so, you know, so, so then we, we came for Ride for Dad, and then uh, a local graphics person there, Dave O'Malley, 
uh, came along about two or three years in and came up with the, the design for us, took it away from stuff that we had drawn oh, wow. ourselves by hand. Is that you know, right? And, uh, yeah. Uh, and, working and, with and that's time. how people came, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, David O'Malley, uh, Aero Graphics, yeah. uh, came to us and said, uh, I'd like to help you uh, free of charge. You know, uh, I, w I, I like what you're doing, and I want to support it. And uh, that's where he came up with uh, that logo, which is uh, well-known now across, across the country. Yeah, it's a well-branded yeah, logo. I mean, everybody knows that. It's and, that, and that's and that's the beauty of like when you say like you were at the the summit in, in Newfoundland. There, if you go to to any of these rides, you know, mm -hmm. it's we, we strive to make sure that they're all the same. Yeah, you get the same feel yeah. if you're, you know, if you're in Fort McMurray or if you're in St. John that a ride there in Halifax, the ride feels just like the ride for Dad felt back in Ottawa. Yeah, you know, and and it's dedicated teams of volunteers there. Um, you know, uh, to put that on, and then you know, you've got over 300 volunteers just sitting on executive committees, and wow. then they have armies of volunteers working. We call them the ride crew. Yeah, you see them in orange out there at all the rides. They're the ones uh, putting that together. You know, but so. what Byron's saying there, it's not always easy. Uh, you know, a ride here uh, or, or in any city looks very much the same in any other city or or community, but when new rides start, everybody's got their own ideas. Oh, you know what we should do? You know, I think we should do this and this. Oh, dancing Whoa. girls, yeah. We, got, <laughs> we, we have the Ride for Dad Bible. Yeah. And it lays out exactly yeah. how the Ride for Dad is presented to the public and, and, and what goes into it. Yeah. And that's what gives us a strong strong support across the country because they are all the same you know yeah. everybody you know oh we should start a ride for dad well mm -hmm. uh yeah but there's rules yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and that's uh, you know we like yeah we always joke before that you know it was all been tried on error and we've made every mistake that could be made along <laughs> the way so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all written in that okay, book yeah, all right take that <laughs> one okay. out you know but now what we not got to it. do it. yeah the, the the book of what not to do is even bigger than our writing yeah. you know it's, uh, yeah there's a lot to learn i think that's the the important thing when it comes to the ride itself is that it is it is an organization you have to think of it in business sense when you're you know and you, it's try, it's it's always interesting. We have this conversation in Ottawa quite a bit, where you're harnessing passion towards the ride, and want to filter it in the right direction and make sure that there's always that passion that's still there, just as long as people know that they still have a rules and regulations that they got to follow within there. Um, you know, because we do there is a standard, if you will, across the board of you know visual identity and and what the ride is and. And you can't, just because it's an individual chapter doesn't mean that you can stray from nationally what the, what the vision has been. Well, that's because you have, you know, we have national sponsors like BMW Motorrad that's been on board with us now a couple of years. Yeah. And in the past we had Telus and Marksworth Warehouse, Yeah. you know, and, and, you know, they expect. Exactly. You know, they expect you to look the same all across the country and you have to, you know, you have your deliverables. Yeah. But you have to deliver for the kind of money that they're bringing right. to the show. Right. Yeah, it it uh, really attracts uh, valuable people uh, like yourself uh, to the ride for dad. You know, uh, people who want to get involved, who people who donate their time mm -hmm. and their energy and their expertise, uh, people like you across the country who join the ride for dad and make it even stronger than it is. Well, it, it's, it, you know, what's interesting about it, and, I, and I've joked about it with, with, you know, some friends of mine and within the city and, and I've joked, but it's like, there's, there's people that are part of the ride that volunteer and work harder than there are people that, that I know that have <laughs> had careers and yeah. getting paid yeah. good salaries and don't work quite as hard. You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it is nice to see the amount of energy and the passion that goes into it. Yeah, and, and, and the non-riders. Right? And the non, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. hundreds of people working very hard, non-riders just to put on so that, you know, those guys can have a good day for and men yeah. and women 
going out there and have a good day. And that's something else too, is when we, we first started, which differentiated our ride from a lot of other ones way back in the day, was we put ours out as a family event. Yeah. You know, to make people come and feel, feel comfortable at the event, uh, bring the families. First time riders could come out and this yeah. kind of stuff. We, you know, it wasn't just one kind of motorcycle, all kinds of motorcycles yeah. were welcome and encouraged. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it can be intimidating if you're a new rider and ride into a place where there's seven or 800 <laughs> motorcycles all sitting there and everybody else seems to know what they're doing. But, yeah. you know, we, you know, the rides are well organized and, uh, we put a lot of, you know, oh, well, you know well, well, yeah, how much work goes in with the committee to, to make sure that all the, yeah all the bases are covered that everybody's going to have a good safe day just the safety the safety side is paramount i mean it's it's so crucial and uh you know it's nice it's you know this year you know and we can talk a little bit about you know this year the ottawa ride but like when we were looking at the route and changing uh the starting point of the route so we want to do a parade with ottawa police going by uh, and have a little parade for Chio for all the kids and then around the cancer clinic itself at the Ottawa Hospital and have the patients, you know, either be in the windows or they can come outside and see, you know, a thousand plus bikes going by yeah. is, is pretty remarkable. And, yeah. and just for them to know that, hey, you know, we're here for you guys. We're here for you uh, and your families. And um, but of course, the Ottawa Hospital and everybody involved in that group you know that wants to know the safety and what's involved with this and you know there's it's it's certainly nice to have the expertise that we have around you know our local table anyways to be able to to work with that and say you know we have done it for 24 years you can look at the track record we know what we're doing here it's we're we're going to we're going to work with you but it'll be a safe event it'll be a fun event and and uh you know, so it's it's exciting times to see those, <laughs> to see those for sure. Um, you know, everybody coming out with that. Um, but the you know you touched on it just briefly. It was, I want to say too about the with the ride talking about souvenirs and all of that. At what point um, did that become something where you had merchandise and souvenirs? Yeah, and yeah. We uh, the first the very first ride there we had a box of T-shirts that we sold over the back of our truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and that was it. And we just thought, okay, here and we and we got uh, we had pins made the very first year yeah. with our logo with, with the year on it. Cause the new bikers were were big into pins, so we did that. And then the next year, okay, well, let's make it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And and then we started bringing in professional aspect people to go yeah. and talk to him. And you know, yeah. we've gone from you know twenty four shirts to doing ordering up to a quarter of a million dollars worth of souvenirs every year, wholesale. You know, now they get out. Yeah. And um, it's the same thing, you know, and a souvenir that's available in Ottawa is also available to the guys that ride in, you know, up in Whitehorse in the Yukon, you know, because yeah. we, you know, we, we source them uh, centrally and work them out through the, through the chapters. They all order them from us. Uh, we've got an online store now um, as well for people that want to want to purchase stuff, the stuff that they, they couldn't get at their ride. And uh, yeah, it's become a part of it. Now, mind, it's it is a small revenue stream, but really, it's about branding. Absolutely, you know, it's a bit out there. And, and uh, I remember I went to the Rolling Stones concert here in Ottawa, and I was <laughs> many years back, and I was thrilled that I saw five or six Ride for Dad T-shirts. You know, I mean, that was that was an event where you took your best T-shirt, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're going to a Stones concert, you know, and I you know, saw four or five Ride for Dad T-shirts. I thought that was pretty cool. And there was a time there next to Harley Davidson, we were the second most popular brand out there. Is that right? Yeah, on the, in the motorcycle world. Wow. Yeah, so so we'll, we got to get it back there then. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. We have to get that back. I mean, that would be a pretty uh, nice distinction to have out there. Is that that load? The nice thing too with the, with branding too is branding goes hand in hand with awareness. Because as soon as you have a conversation of, oh, what's that logo? What's this logo? That all of a sudden is awareness, right? So the power behind having merchandise out there is is unbelievable. Being able to have people wonder, they're curious about what does what is it? What does it stand for? Yeah. And being able to share that, and you can share that experience with people, right, is, is a powerful thing. So here's one for you, Mike. Yeah. How do we get Taylor Swift involved? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think if we can get the Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> we have a better chance of getting her. <laughs> yeah. 
you know what though? When it comes to music, I am I am proud to say that we've we've last year we had a friend of mine, Dallas Alexander, that came out and he brought a whole crew of people that came and he's a retired special forces member and uh, you know he. That and, and this is one of the things that, I, that I've said to with our executive is that each one of us bring our own network. We have our yeah. own community that we're involved in. And if we can share that amongst them, we can bring that. So by me having a connection to Dallas, Dallas bringing his connection from the military, then all of a sudden we had uh, all these individuals that came at the end of the ride, participated in the ride, and then came at the end of the ride with their families and to listen to him play. And, you know, that's how these communities, when we talk about Alberta and we talk about Edmonton and we talk about, um, you know, Halifax, all these different communities, that's how we can grow is by how the two of you did it. Started with your network and your network as a network of itself. And we just keep growing that, right? And our, our national ambassador is Jason McCoy in the road handle, right? Exactly. They're, Which They're out there. And you can't say enough about <laughs> and I'm good about Jason McCoy and what he's done for the Ride for Dad. I mean, it's unbelievable to see um, a man of at his level in his career and traveling and family man himself. And it seems like he's always got the time to to participate in a ride and participate in getting a message out there. And um, how did that connection happen for you guys with with Jason? Was it he was a local, uh, I think, in the yeah. uh, Grand River. Uh, not Grand River, but in uh, Huronia. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Really was, there, uh, there. yeah. Got involved there, and then he, he came to us and said, yeah. "Would you like, you know, me to do some other things for you?" Well, that didn't take too long, and we. <laughs> Did you have to have a drink <laughs> to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a minute. I got Taylor Swift on hold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so he came to you. Uh, that says a lot about his character too then. Yeah, I mean, coaching, if, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. uh, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And he certainly is, uh, is the public image that um, is a great amb ambassador for the ride itself. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, uh, it certainly is. Um, so back to the one question I, I, I had there was, do you, what do you see then in the next, you know, five, ten years? You thought we'd skate it around. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I have a sometimes you know, memory. I, I sometimes remember things. <laughs> Swerve and deflect. Yeah. No, because, and I ask out of curiosity because I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously very involved in, in the ride myself too, and and I see all kinds of potential with with growth and development and all that. So I'm just, you know, I'm so curious as to. I know that when the two of you started, you had no clue that it was going to end up yeah. being at the level it is. I mean, statistically speaking, over forty-two million dollars now has been raised. I mean, but how does that feel to hear that that you're we that used we used to laugh and joke when we were when we were driving around in our trucks, going from town to town, you know, talking about it. <laughs> we were once sitting there having a few drinks in a parking lot of a Super Six or something, and. and you're saying what, <laughs> what, what, how needed to be to be able to raise a million dollars, and then we just started laughing at her. So and not well, stay at a super you know, six. <laughs> you know, how crazy that! We'll never raise a million bucks. Crazy. You know. crazy. Now it's forty something. Else. And now you're over forty-two million, and hard to believe. And growing, yeah. and growing. I mean, it, it was amazing to me at at how people came together and through COVID, and I mean, we had yeah, a ride I mean, together, yeah, and harnessed resources and pulled together and we're able to get that you yeah. know that going do you um because the two of you are still involved you're still uh, you're still at rides you're i see i see both of you in ottawa obviously i mean i'm semi-retired so, so I'm, you uh, were retired when you started though too <laughs> <laughs> so gary i don't know <laughs> i forgot about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll ask others if you're actually retired <laughs> Well, yeah, because you just had a birthday. I did. Big yeah, one. Big one, yeah. Who would have thought? Happy. Happy yeah. uh, belated. Yeah. Well, there, there's no sad. doubt that the two of us are, you know, getting older than dirt sort of yeah. thing. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we've got a, you know, um, succession planning is, is an important thing. Yeah. 
we preach that to all our chapters. Uh, you know, you're not going to do this forever. So make yeah. sure that you've got good people trained and coming yeah. up behind you. And I, I think we're in that we're in that field. We're looking at uh, good people to take us. And uh, there's a lot of exciting conversations um, amongst the people out that, that uh, you know, with between their guys from Winnipeg and um, up in the Yukon and that, uh, Niagara Falls yeah. guys, they have some pretty big ideas, you know, yeah. about w what to do in the next 25 years. Oh yeah. You know, and, and how to, how to get that on and keep it, keep it growing and keep it uh, important. You know, the number of chapters that we've had um, varies. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're around 24, 25 now, but it has been as high as into the 40s. Is that right? You know, when we were uh, doing snowmobile rides for dad and the mm -hmm. ATV ride for dad and the watercraft ride for dads, those events, but you know, the whole climate and global warming and all that kind of stuff has really mm -hmm. put a whack on, on the, yeah. that kind of stuff. So we're still back to many focused on motorcycles and that, but there's, you know, a lot, a lot more and more to do to reach out to beyond the motorcycle community, the biker community. Yeah. Um, you know, to uh, to tap into some of the expertise and, and the money that's out there to, to keep the cause going. We're we're an event based charity, so that means your expenses are high. Yeah. It also means for uh, we're at the mercy of the weather. The weather, fair weather. For you know, sure. we own all that, yeah. and and we're also at the mercy of uh, of like something like COVID. You know, that came yeah. along, and, and and a lot of event based charities, you know, got knocked right off the. Yeah. off the table sort of thing we we managed to hang in but we took a heck of a hit on the amount of money coming in there's yeah. no doubt about that but uh so you you've got to look at that and resiliency and building that in you know the whole internet ai all that stuff coming on now you know oh, yeah. uh, back in our day the you know the interweb we, we thought it was a fad <laughs> you know it wasn't going to last very long and you know we were all excited when we, when we got our first web page you know Woo, look, at, look at us and uh you know but now yeah. Now we have a person uh, on our staff that is just dedicated to, to the yeah. social, you know, social network to keep, you know, keep it out there and you know, these podcasts and stuff like that. Which is a, I mean, it's a huge, huge part. Like that. Well, that's how this this came about. Was that, yeah. you know, it was one of those things where it's again the cost savings. Okay. Well, we already have the equipment here at the clinic. Let's let's get the content out there. Get the story out there. We, we have audio video that we can now send out and share it amongst all the social media side, right? Because that's such a big, big component of, of the branding and the advertising and the marketing side of it. And, you know, right now we're going through, we've met with all of the, um, um, all the media outlets. And, uh, you know, it's just, it can be overwhelming as to they come back with numbers and this is what you get for it. And... This is what we can include in it if you buy this package and you have multiple in Ottawa, you have multiple options across the board to, to pick. And then you have to look at statistically demographic, where does it hit? What's the age brackets? Um, you know, I'm, I've been pushing, you know, for, a, for us to start working and getting a younger demographic involved as well. You know, you joked about being older than dirt, but we have we have a ridership in Ottawa that is we have a lot of the sixty plus crowd too, and we 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 have them. They're they're diehard riders. They love the ride. It's amazing. Now, how can we get their kids to be participating in this? Well, that's it. And, and there's a lot of kids in our rides now that you know when, yeah. the, when the ride started, they weren't even born. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know. Yeah. And, and yeah. So now yeah. they're they're taking part of it. So. We have to make sure that it, it continues on for the next 25 years. What yep. exactly it's going to look like, uh, you know, I don't know. We uh, we still depend, we still like to have a grassroots feel yeah. to the way we do things because it does come down to that one rider going, calling on a few of his friends yeah. and raising a few dollars. Absolutely. It's still that, that's where the 40-some million came from is yeah. all those guys. And we have a captain's club, you know, where we... Uh, we award people that bring in more than a thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars with pins and patches. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is four or five thousand. We've got over five thousand of them now that have yeah. raised over a thousand dollars each, and some of them, in, including right locally here. Um, well, I was just going to say yeah. this Thursday. So yeah, this Thursday, Thursday we're we're meeting with. Uh, I guess we can say 
sure it'll let it leak. We'll let it leak out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have uh, Brent Fishman, who's a a local uh, rider. I mean, he's been so actively involved in years and yeah. years with the ride, and and uh, he actually he's, he's uh, hit a, a huge plateau of over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars awesome. raised. Yeah, he's a platinum. Awesome. Only one of only eight in Canada. So, eight know. in Canada, a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. You know, I get literally goosebumps yeah. when I think of what what he himself has has done, and the changes that he, with the money there, directly has impacted lives. Yeah. Such a commitment. You know, Such a it's, commitment. It's unbelievable you know. to think that. Uh, you know, right. we have such amazing people within these communities all across Canada that are doing this. I mean, you know, and one of eight is a pretty amazing uh, yeah. stat to, yeah. you know. Cause but I think, you know, the ride will continue and uh, it will it will continue to grow. Yeah. Uh, there'll be some transitioning. Uh, there, you know, always has to be. But yeah. I think... Uh, you know, over the next uh, decade, the, the ride will become even more powerful than it's ever been. Uh, and uh, that means uh, a lot of good news for the fight against prostate cancer. The, the news since I've started, I mean, the uh, Clarity DX that out in Alberta that they've been working on when, uh, you know, when the uh, doctor had given his uh, talk about that and what they're doing with Clarity DX from the research uh, dollars that the Ride for Dad has provided, and uh, and now being able to avoid a lot of the terps that they were doing and the, these biopsies, right. um, you know, now they're going being able to do no, non-invasive options at that. Uh, even locally, I mean, we can talk about uh, the Da Vinci, where the Ride for Dad um, was able to raise money. The Ottawa Hospital purchased the mis this machine, the Da Vinci, um, which is obviously short form for some big long medical that none of us can pronounce probably. <laughs> the name of the guy that delivered it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, but then we had, I mean, one of our national members who's now national, but he was a local uh, executive, uh, Dr. Don Chow, ended up needing surgery. They used that machine. On, on him, yeah. it was. Uh, well, one of the one of the very first volunteer guys um, with the police association that helped me manning a table or something or directing traffic in the very first year, and he ended up going under surgery with a robotic knife that we had, you know, wow. helped help fund with the over a million dollars. You know, and you talk about a good investment in your time. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're wondering about uh, the ride for dad, ask sure. Dr. Chow. Yeah. 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 He's, he'll tell you a story. Yeah. yeah. Don, uh, for those that are listening, Don Chow is the, uh, uh, he's been uh, almost since day one, I think, the Ottawa Senators team physician. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, was scheduled to, uh, to have spinal surgery from him many years ago. And, uh, and then he was in a bit of an accident and, uh, and uh, I ended up getting paired up with someone who he had hired <laughs> and uh, turned out to be an amazing physician. And uh, Don fixed my back. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got all kinds of metal in there. Uh, Xandra's. He did Xandra's spinal surgery. Another well, that's, how, that's how he found out about the ride for dad was working on you. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> You're really putting yourself on the line <laughs> yeah, for right. this cause. Before you put me under. <laughs> yeah. Have you had your prostate yeah, But, you know, it was six months after he put all that yeah. metal in, in me uh, that uh, Byron and, and I and uh, hundreds of others rode right across Canada, coast to coast. Yeah. And uh, it's, wow. it's still holding all together. You know? So he knows what he's doing. I think we can all say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a 10-year anniversary. Yeah. Now, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a second, but I, I want to touch base real quick. We got our 24th this year, and we have a 25th anniversary coming up. It's a big one. Kind of uh, take time to reflect the two of you, but all that's, that's passed, uh, you know, in 25 years of, of 
cr- you know, started with uh, Tim Hortons coffee, <laughs> as yeah. Canadian as you can yeah. get. <laughs> yeah. uh, probably said sorry to each other a few times and uh, A, a lot in the conversations, and now you're at a point where, you know, over the 42 million mark raised and looking for 25 more years. But uh, what do you see for the 20, uh, the 25th? You guys have kind of some... Well, we have a... <laughs> We have a lot of people looking into it, trying to decide. Okay, what you know? What do we do? What can we do to uh, to celebrate it? It may be a number of smaller things as opposed to uh, right across Canada was a was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very very. Uh, we just partnered up with the uh, with the Canadian military on that mm-hmm. for the uh, and help raise money for for some of their charities at the same time. Mm-hmm. But it, you know it was. Uh, quite an endeavor 32 days you know so I don't know if we'll do anything quite that big but um, you know it'll be uh, we'll be we'll celebrate but certainly Gary and I may just go to the Tim Hortons and yeah <laughs> what, where, what Tim Hortons was it what, what Tim Hortons was it on uh, Maryville Road um, Maryville down by the school there the high school oh yeah huh. so do you think maybe we should have the Go there, yeah. We're well, gonna get a brass plaque put on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Memorial. Yeah. It's now a heritage yeah. site. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right underneath the one that John A. McDonald got his coffee here. Yeah. Right just below that one. Yeah. Oh, maybe for the twenty fifth. Uh, I, I know a guy that's gonna help organize it, so maybe we should have our. Uh, that'll be the launch of our twenty fifth. We'll uh, we'll get everybody to, yeah. to to start in that parking lot. <laughs> well, there's there's a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of interesting ideas out there that we're talking and. Uh, I know the road hammers may do a bit of a tour out west for us, and uh, but anyway, there's lots, lots in the back burner. Jason, if you're listening, which you're gonna be, yeah. you come to <laughs> I Ottawa. I didn't let that out, Jason. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a, a great facility here called Canadian Tire Center. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then, you know, that's this year we can let that out too. Is in Ottawa. That's where we're uh, we're looking to have our celebratory end of the ride. This year at uh, at the Canadian oh, Tire Center, that's, that should be exciting. Yeah, so that's going to be a, a a big event. Live music, great food, probably better conversations. <laughs> it's a good it's a good one, right? So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot. But, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. I'm uh, got to fill you up with coffee. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, is there anything else that you want to you want to touch base on before we uh, we let go? No, I don't. Uh, no, you know, and. I, and Gary and I, you know, at the same time, we're we're not we're not overly emotional guys, and so we got to really struggle at, at at thanking people quite often. We don't do it enough, I think, for sure. So I should have a set of onions. Yeah. And <laughs> well, you know, so many well, we're kind of grizzled old fellows, but they, you know, to thank the number of, of volunteers and that that work yeah. for us, and, and you know, the number of women that are involved in our organization yeah. is just amazing. We've got terrific people and. We probably never can thank them all enough, you know, yeah. and there's been, you know, hundreds and hundreds have gone through, many have passed on, you know, guys mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, set up our Edmonton ride, he's passed, and other guys that, you know, and uh, we don't, it's very, very hard for us to ever get a yeah. chance to really thank everybody, so I, I really don't know how we're going to do it. But one of the, I remember sitting at a uh, one of the conventions there, I think it was in in St. John's, and somebody said to me, you know, one of the guys sat down and said, you must be real proud about everything that you've done and all this kind of stuff. I said, you know, when I look around this room and I see a guy from Halifax talking to a guy from Whitehorse, and the two of them are joking, and they're good friends now because they've been yeah. on the part of the ride for that. I said, there's two guys that never would have met. Yeah. You know, let alone become yeah. lifelong friends and yeah. people all across the country, you know, that, that are now, you know, disciples of Gary Jans. Thing and, 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 and that message, you know, and, you know it's, it, it, it's going to be so great when we, you know, finally yeah. close the turn off the lights at the Tim Hortons and just wander <laughs> off down Maryville Road yeah. together arm in arm yeah. and, and knowing that, that behind us, you know, there, there's a lot of people going to keep yeah. this thing going and that's, that's the yeah. legacy there. I was going to say, you two have certainly created a legacy that uh, is unprecedented. You, you know, you look at individuals in, in say, in Canada that have have done things that have have you know impacted so many and you have you know again in the cancer world you have a Terry Fox Terry mm-hmm. Fox you know and then you think about what you two have done I mean you're in that conversation and that's 
I don't know if anyone said that to you, but like that really is <laughs> with the conversation that you're in is that you've created something that's it's change changed and changing lives daily. It really, really is. I and never think about it that way it, at all. <laughs> never that never crosses my mind. You know, we've had you know since the past twenty five years have been uh, you know some some headaches, but it's been fun yeah. working with Byron and all of the hundreds of uh, volunteers across the country. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been a, a fantastic ride, and it will continue. Oh yeah, we uh, yeah. I know I can't thank the volunteers, the executive. I mean, they're in Ottawa here. They're absolutely amazing. They're so dedicated. It's uh, and you know, use the term earlier, but family, and it really is. We we have a, you know, when we send emails out, it's the ride family, and it it really is. Yeah. Uh, it it has become a you know a second family. When I lost my dad to prostate cancer, it was one of the first groups that I of individuals that reached out were the ride family. You know, and and by the time I got back home. Um, I had, who's now my co-chair, Tina, sitting on my front step waiting for me and seeing if I was all right, how I was doing. And, you know, it's, it, uh, those are friendships that, that will last forever. You yeah. know, it, it really is. And there's times when we look at these committees and see how hard they're working and doing all that kind of stuff that we kind of say to each other, what do we do to these poor people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably have cursed you both a few yeah, times. <laughs> <laughs> I love you dearly, but at the same time. <laughs> no. Well, guys, I thank you for your time. We're going to get this uh, this message out there. We're going to share this with uh, with everywhere, and maybe this will, uh, this, what they say, will go viral, and uh, you'll have to start it in down uh, in the States. And, uh, Does that mean we get yeah. sick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be good. This is good. I really appreciate the time, guys. And Thanks, Mike. <laughs> no, uh, good. You're a good example of uh, the, the kind of people that uh, Ride for Dad has been lucky enough to attract across the country. Thank yeah. you. For what you do. Sure. Yeah. You're talking about fools. <laughs> In so many words. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, you guys have led the way, and uh, I think it's it's time for continue to keep growing and uh people that uh, it's near and dear to their heart, right? Cool. So, excellent. Thank you so Thank much, you. gentlemen. Appreciate it.